Hey everybody, this is Steve Chase here. I want to talk about how you can run the accounts receivable aging summary report inside a QBO. Okay, so first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to navigate QuickBooks dashboard. Uh, when you land on the dashboard, um, just be aware that the invoices here are only going to be tracking true invoices. If you uh, don't use invoices in QuickBooks and get money through, let's say, Shopify or PayPal, and you're just recognizing deposits, uh, they're not going to show up uh, on the sales uh, that you see that you see here. So, um, yeah, just be be aware of that. That if you don't see any sales, you're like that. That's really low. Well, th there's a big difference um, of actually sending out an invoice or sales receipt versus just a straight deposit there. So, uh, but anyways, we're talking about QuickBooks invoicing, okay, and when you look at your invoices, you can select invoices. This will give you a quick little uh, grasp of what is overdue, what's not due yet, and so forth, and what's what's not unpaid here. I like the the overview. Um, it's kind of helpful here to, to get things set up as well. So little shortcuts here, but anyways, um, how do we just go? find that report you're going to navigate to reports it's called the accounts receivable aging summary first one on the list so it's crucial for small business owners that send out invoices are doing the work and then getting paid later know your numbers okay so this is going to break it down by 30 day periods here you can change that to whatever method you want if i said 7 days just to show you as an example, it's gonna chop it up into uh, seven day periods, uh, seven day ages periods, and then how many periods would you like here? So we could do 10 if we wanted to and just really stretch this out here. So I'm current with all of these. I am late for Alex Baker one to seven days. I can select the 230 here, open up the invoice, and then if I wanted to send an invoice uh, reminder, I could just do it right here at the save and send button here. Okay. Um, a cool thing is we've got the ability to go back in time to show the difference here. So let me get, let me get us back to the normal mode here. That five thousand dollars is really old. Okay, one one. So what's what's really interesting here is I open this up here. Notice it's January first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my accounts receivable and go back in time. And uh, this is really interesting that you can do that here. So we're gonna say it's uh, we're gonna say it's January first, two thousand eight, when we went into the year twenty eighteen. How did our accounts receivable look back then? Here, let me get back to the main report here. There we go. So you see how it's current? And then let's pretend it's now February 14th. That invoice on February 14th um, is now, it, going into the mode where it's here. So uh, that could be helpful if you're doing um, some cleanup work and you're trying to go back in time to see kind of where things are at. Of course, um, you want to be running with today. Today's October 31st, 2019, run report. And that's our reality here. This $11,812 falls on the balance sheet as an asset. That is money owed to the business. So let's take a quick look at the balance sheet. That's going to show up under balance sheet, making sure your balance sheet's as of today. You'll see your cash. You'll see accounts receivable and any undeposited funds. All of these add up to your assets. And then down below, we'll have our liabilities, our credit card debts, loans, and so forth. And the difference uh, will be your owner's net rate or your net worth here. So. That is our accounts receivable flows from 
the profit and loss statement. And just so a lot of people know this, or don't know this, I should say, is when you run the pro good old fashioned profit and loss, do know, I'm gonna do all dates here, $43,000 of revenue. However, that's under accrual. So if I switch it to cash, I am going to omit unpaid invoices. Watch what happens to this number here when I switch to cash. Yep, it's the difference of that 11,800 that was accrual versus cash. That's huge to know the difference between the two. Cash is what actually came in and out of the business. Accrual is what's on the books as far as invoicing and billing goes. Thanks for watching another video. This is Steve Chase here at Sequential Solutions and uh, click the subscribe button if you want to continue watching more videos like this. Thank you.